In this video, I'll give you my thoughts about uh, Indian employers. Okay, now uh, I have worked in, you know, I my whole life I lived in Dubai. Uh, I was raised over there from a very small age. Um, my parents themselves were employers. I had friends who had running family businesses. And I've also met uh, some, not many, employers from India when they would fly down or we would fly down there. So given uh, my experience with employers, I have taken seven key points, seven key traits of these employers. Now, mind you, there are traditional employers, there are semi-traditional, there are modern. So I'm not talking of those uh, employers who are educated abroad and who, you, you, you know, have a lineage of, uh, uh, you know, parents, I, uh, they have studied with Oxford and this guy is studying Harvard and uh, his mannerisms is like, wow, he is not the typical Indian. No, I'm talking of the typical Indian. Okay. So these are the seven traits. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong. And the purpose of sharing this with you is... Uh, I get sometimes um, British, American or uh, people who are not Indians and who tell me, uh, you know, I'm working for this really rich uh, guy, employer, he's Indian uh, and this is the problem. Why do they behave like this? Why do they act like this? Or uh, what is going through their mind? So I prepare these seven points. Go through them and let me know what do you think. Okay. So in no particular order, I'll give you these seven characteristics. The first one is when you're dealing with a traditional employer, you can make out with the uh, you can make out with the way they dress the environment like they would have maybe religious uh, uh, photographs or they'll have a religious room where they pray to their gods or they'll have uh, family kind of lineage photographs or they'll have their big projects you know they will stand and they will pose it's all about me 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 i i i okay they will stand and pose oh he shook hands with this vip so it's all centered around him this particular guy and when you're talking of traditional employers they tend to employ people from their own background and their own ethnicity their own culture like for a, a Keralite will only employ Keralites majority uh, North Indian will only employ North Indians. Okay. Uh, however, they have a small percentage where they'll employ Filipinos or maybe Bangladeshis or uh, Pakistanis. But in UAE, especially in the Middle East, they have made it mandatory for uh, them to have mixed nationality. So, you know, out of compulsion, they tend to employ. So the first thing is, if the guy is traditional, you'll definitely see him having a puja or a prayer room like if it's a Muslim guy there'll be a namaz room a Christian guy will have his Christian gods okay so that's the first warning bell that he's very traditional and then they'll have their mother father or they'll have their family or they'll have you know shake hands with the big who's who because it's all about me 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 I I I and the environment the environment they tend to employ their own kind of people okay and uh, <laughs> don't be surprised if they are North Indians or they are South Indians and they will talk in their own mother tongue most of the time. You'll see employees talk their mother tongue and he'll also talk their mother tongue. So just don't be surprised with that. The second thing is, um, okay, uh, yeah, uh, the second part is they, they will, uh, you know, especially when it's traditional, he'll always take the role of being a father figure. Like, I'm the father, I mentored you, I taught you these skills, you have to be grateful to me. So, it he always takes the role of an elder father figure. Some places it can be good, like he'll be very protective, uh, especially of girls, of guys. In some places it can be overbearing, like you literally have to listen to everything he says, everyone has to go, yes sir, no sir, no, naughty head. Giving sir as a respect is not a problem, but then it can be overbearing sometimes. They literally will ask you, go get me a glass of water. So don't be surprised with that, okay? And uh, you'll always feel the sense that you owe him something. It's like, no matter how much you work, uh, it, you are expected to do the job. You can sit 24 hours, uh, complete a project, and you'll be good, good, good. That's it. And um, there'll be no talk about, okay, I'll give you an extra bonus or something. It's, it's more like you owe everything to him. And don't be surprised if 
there is always a murmur. When he joined, he didn't know anything. It was because of me. I taught him. You know, uh, he didn't know anything. He didn't know engineering. We taught him accounts. We taught him the software way. So it's all because of him. In some ways, it can be true. But then, you know, when you keep hearing again and again, you're like, oh, come on, man, stop it. Like it, it's in every bloody company. Okay. Then um, the next point is um, whatever he does, whatever he does for you, it is him going out of the way. Okay. Let's say, for example, um, you are sick. He sent you to the hospital. See, see how generous he is. Oh, you wanted a little bit of a loan. See, he is generous. Uh, then you are expected to give back that favor huh? and you're never expected to forget it. So you really have to go out of the way to keep him happy. Like if you are expected to do this and you do this, that's bad. If you are expected to do this and you go out of the way and do this and this and you go sometimes maybe even buy the grocery shopping, babysit his children or do the errands and all that. Ah, you're a good employee. Okay, I'm not saying all of them, but the traditional sense. Okay, uh, and if he asks you for respect, you cannot say no. That is very, very taboo. It's a very bad thing. Okay, <coughs> uh, there is also this tendency that is there with traditional uh, employees. You are his employee 24-7. In some cases, you can even say you are his slave 24-7. Um, it, it's a very unfortunate thing because they feel that they've given you a life and uh, if you take his favor, let's say he helped you get married or send your child to school or this or that, uh, you can never forget that. And uh, once you take a favor and here's the problem, it's a catch 22 situation. You can't say no to it. And if you do say no, it has to be very tactful. Okay. So, uh, and uh, you might feel this surprising. He might even ask you, all to go to church or pray to God or, uh, you know, whatever it is. So you're expected to be like his 24-7 employee. Like he can call you at the middle of the night and say, oh, there was something emer emergency in the factory. Uh, you need, you know, we need your help and you have to do it. Okay. Uh, number five is, uh, this one is, I guess, human tendency, but favoritism is... Just that they will always be a favorite. They will always be a somebody who he will like or a group he will like. And there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. And uh, he will not do anything to even hide it. He will not try to like camouflage it. He will explicitly show you on your face that these are my favorites. And if you try to get into a fight or argument with his favorite, uh, he will not show anything. But um, you can definitely be... Uh, you can keep it in the back of your head that your life is going to be made miserable. Okay. There'll always be favoritism. There'll always be unprofessionalism. There'll always be the extra given to his pet. And uh, by that, I mean also his pet will spy on you. His pet will give leak out information. And uh, uh, I hate to admit this, but I was always that type of a character that my loyalty was always to the employer, not to the employees. So I used to also leak out information quite a number of times. Number six, uh, this one you can't avoid. You can work with the company for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Uh, but the positions at the top are reserved for him, his children and the ones he considers family. So even if you are, let's say, second to him, his child will come in between you and the owner. And uh, depending on how, you know, uh, how much of a like uh, aggressive takeover it is, um, you might be asked to start all over from scratch. They'll say that they will treat you like shit. It's like uh, they will even tell you on your face. I know you have given 30 years of your life, but uh, that doesn't mean uh, we you worked for us for free. We took care of you. So now new management, you have to prove yourself from zero. And I'll tell you, I have met so many of my clients, actual clients who have told me this, where they worked for a guy and his son or daughter came over as, you know, chief, uh, like chairman, assistant chairman or CEO, assistant CEO and big, big positions. And they were just bumped lower. And where you could directly talk to the owner before now you have to talk to the 
son or you have to give them, you know, just to kiss their ass and make their ego go up in the sky. And this can really demotivate, hurt a person. Okay. Um, and um, number seven, um, this may be the last, I don't know if I'll get a bonus one. But uh, just keep in mind that as long as you're working for him, he will be your well-wisher, he will take care of you, he will do whatever it takes. But the day you decide to resign or the day he comes to know that you plan to resign, he will become your biggest enemy. This goes hands down. He will not only be your biggest enemy, he will make your life miserable. Don't be surprised if he gives you a very, very bad letter of recommendation or he doesn't allow you to go easily or he, uh, he just makes... Uh, you, you know, you'll begin to wonder like, why is he doing this? Is he my enemy? Like for all these years that I served him, like why he has to do all this? So uh, don't be surprised that uh, he will act in a way that is unbecoming. He'll be very cold. He'll be very calculative. He like, for example, you used to meet him every time. You could easily go open door policy. Now, after you resigned, maybe he'll not allow you to come into the office. Maybe he'll prevent you from entering the premises. And even if you have to meet him, even if he's doing nothing, he'll make you wait. Like, you'll be like, why is he treating me like this? So, um, he can end up being your biggest enemy. And uh, yeah, in, in a way, I kind of understand because they don't want company secrets going out or interaction with others. But be prepared for that. Okay. So now comes the billion dollar question. Is it worth working for an Indian employer? Yes or no, a traditional one. Uh, for me, for me, I'll, I'll give you my uh, verdict. Uh, I have known how to handle these characters. I've known how to handle these egos. I've known how to handle these individuals and in not in a manipulative way, but in a way where I, I always knew that they were like a father figure. They were like an elder brother kind of a thing. And um, you, you know how to go about. Uh, I did have a very bad experience. And I'm not ashamed to say this. It was, yes, there was a South Indian. There was a North Indian. Uh, and from being my best, like best buddy or best friend or family, this thing, they became one of the worst enemies possible. In fact, the biggest damage that was done to me was by a South Indian guy. He not only made sure he cancelled my visa when I was in Dubai, he made sure that I got an overall ban, that I could not even enter the country. And I didn't do anything bad to him. It just didn't work out. The North Indian guy didn't pay me for months together. And uh, later on, he threatened me that uh, if I would claim this, he would make sure that I don't stay in UAE and he had some underworld connections. So, you know, North and South both have had bad issues. But otherwise, I would say that overall it has been kind of pleasant. It has been kind of good. It all depends on you. If you come with a Western mindset, a Western template, you I don't think you can adjust with them. But if you come from a traditional background where you had like a traditional Indian family father or, you know, even Western traditional father, head of the family and uh, these hierarchies, then I think you can manage. Others, I don't think you can. So, <laughs> would I say that uh, uh, it's worth working for them? Yeah, uh, if you can handle them. But only thing I would tell you is don't stick around for too long. Don't stick around for too long because uh, then it becomes a suffocation. You'll not grow. After a certain point, you just cannot grow. So, when it comes to that, be uh, be mindful that there is a ceiling, there's a limit, because obviously it's not never ending. And biggest thing is if they do something for you, if they do one, they expect 10 back. So if they helped you with your child's education or with your wedding or with the interest free loan, you can be rest assured they will demand their pound of flesh from you. And uh, <coughs> for Westerners who are working for Indian management, an Indian will always be Indian. See, the reason why they are the most successful they have the maximum money, maximum savings is because of this hardcore work culture. Okay, work is worship, worship is God. There's no balanced life. There's no quiet quitting. There's no, uh, you know, work-life balance. There's no, you work uh, like, you know, olden days in the Western, the thing, 30 years you work in a company and then retire. It is like that. You, your whole life, you're dedicated to him. He, he owns... You, he owes, you know, not owes, he owns your ass, he owns your life, he owes your family, everything. You belong to him. 
it's that kind of a thing. Uh, maybe in the West it's slightly different uh, because they always have to follow international regulations and law. But Indian management, I'll tell you, don't uh, think that you're working for a Western company. No matter how Western they are, no matter how broad their mindset is, remember the roots. We are always loyal to our roots. So this is what I wanted to share with you. And uh, yeah, this is just as a bonus in case. Me as an employer, I would be as bad as these guys, maybe even worse. Uh, Indian employers, uh, you know, they will demand the last drop of blood from you and uh, they are pretty ruthless. So unless and until you are prepared to manage all this and handle all this, yes, uh, uh, if you can, then join. Otherwise, best stay away. Good, bad, ugly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your side of the argument. Let me know what you think. This is me signing off. You guys take care.